Hello everyone, my name is Alexis Mercado. My Chemistry 496 presentation is an overview of dextromorphanin, also known as DXM, also known as D3-methoxy-N-methylmorphanin. The chemical formula is C18H25NO. This molecule has interesting characteristics such as the base structure of morphanin, shown in green. DXM has a methyl group bonded to the nitrogen, shown in blue. In the bread box, we have an ether, more specifically an anisole, which is a methoxy attached to the benzene ring. Overall, DXM is an active ingredient in many cold and cough medicines. Many of us have or known someone who has consumed cold or cough medicine. I believe it is important to inform consumers of what they are putting into their bodies as they are seeking some kind of treatment. In this case, it is to relieve a cough or cold. Now I'm going to go over the background of DXM. DXM was patented in 1954 by Hoffman LaRouche, a Swiss pharmaceutical company. DXM is a part of the morphinin class of compounds. It is the D isomer of 3-methoxy-N-methylmorphinin, which is the opposing chirality seen in the structures of the morphinin class opioids. Morphinin is the model chemical structure for a huge family of psychoactive drugs containing opiate characteristics. Antisetusives such as dextromorphin and disassociative hallucinogens. DXM was approved for clinical use as a cough suppressant by the FDA in 1958 in a single tablet under the name Roblox. DXM is a over-the-counter antisetusive cough suppressant drug that is also used as one of the active ingredients in many cold and cough medicines such as NyQuil and Theraflu. I will go more into the background of DXM. In its unadulterated form, it occurs as an odorless, opalescent white powder. This is pictured on the bottom right. It is usually accessible as a monohydrate hydrobromide salt. This is pictured on the top right. DXM triggers psychoactive disassociative effects at the same receptors targeted by PCP and ketamine. It has been used recreationally since the 1960s. It is mainly widely available without a prescription. Now I will go into the pharmaceutical effects of DXM. The mechanisms of its antisetusive effects are thought to be ascribed to the N-methyl-D aspartate, also known as NMDA, receptors instead of the opioid receptors in the central nervous system. This produces effects similar to other dissociative anesthetics, such as ketamine and PCP. It produces anti effects by inhibiting the cough center of the medulla oblongata. DXM is better than opioids used at antitussive doses in that it lacks their gastrointestinal side effects such as constipation and causes less depression of the central nervous system. Its mechanism of action is via multiple effects plus actions as a non-selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor and a sigma-1 receptor agonist. Now I will go into the synthesis of DXM. As mentioned before, DXM is usually accessible as a monohydrate hydrobromide salt. Using SciFinder, I was able to find single-step synthesis to extract hydrobromide from dexmethorphan hydrobromide to form dexmorphanin. Out of many single-step synthesis provided, I only list three. The first single-step synthesis has sodium hydroxide, NaOH, and water as reagents to produce DXM as a product. The, single, the second single-step synthesis has ammonium, NH3, and methanol as reagents. Lastly, the third single-step synthesis has sodium carbonate and water as reagents. The procedure for this synthesis is 1. Charge a flask with 1,000 mg of dextromorphanin, hydrobromide. Second, stir at 25 Celsius in a saturated solution of sodium carbonate. Third, after one hour, dilute the reaction mixture with 50 milliliters of DCM. Four, extract the mixture with DCM. Five, dry the combined organic phases over sodium sulfate. 6. Filter and the combined organic phases. 7. Concentrate 
the combined organic phases in vacuum. Next, I will continue to go into the synthesis of DXM. During my research on DXM, I found a published article called Preparation of Morphinin Derivatives by Shirshubabu Ja Chandra and others, stated that dextromethorphan is produced in large volumes annually, more than 150 times per year. Most synthetic procedures make use of huge amounts of vol volatile organic solvents, which are hazardous for the environment. To overcome this problem, ionic liquids are used as a solvent in the preparation of and high yields of dextromethorphan, which leads to decreasing the use of organic volatile solvents. Using ionic liquids can be reduced for multiple batches of reaction. They can be tailor-made to suit specific reaction types, not just as a green solvent. The synthetic route of using ionic liquid adapts a cleaner chemistry that assures both risk rehandling and reduced environmental pollution. For this synthesis, a racemic hydroxy n methylmorphanin as a starting material, an optically inactive isomer, and is treated with tartaric acid for resolution to obtain selective one isomer positive of morphanin. In the next steps, the reagents are CH3, 3, pH, NOH, and methanol and toluene. This causes the alcohol to turn into an ether anisole. Overall, DXM is the final product. Next is a seven step synthesis, a method for preparation of dextromethorphan hydrobromide. Rainy nickel as a reducing agent is replaced by KB. H4, thus reducing the cost. Also, resolution is done with R ibuprofen for the first time. Another advantage is the use of Al Cl3 is adopted to replace H3PO4 to crystallize. Overall, it is a low cost, moderate reaction conditions, easy in operation, and suitable for industrial production. The final project product is dextromorphin hydrobromide. As mentioned, Hydrobromide can be extracted to only obtain DXM. Next is a six step synthesis of DXM. This is easier, less preparation steps, cost effective, and also using chemicals that are easily to handle and can provide higher yields as well as purity than previous synthesis. It has been found that the critical steps of Grewe cyclization helped with synthesis. Grewe's cyclization is a synthetic methodology that multiply charged cationic species which are usually characterized by their reactions with nu weak nucleophiles like arenes, alkenes, and alkanes. This mechanism involves charged dense species formed because of super acidic media or excess acid catalyzed. Overall, over a six step synthesis, DXM is the final product of effective Grewe's cyclization. Okay, this four-step synthesis explained a reported procedure of DXM preparation, where formulation was done before the crystallization step to improve the yield. The starting material is N-formal octabase to have DXM as a final product. Lastly, I will go over a four-step synthesis, a preparation of DXM hydrobromide using 1-butyl-3-methyl imidazolium acetate also known as ionic liquid, as a solvent. This explains a greener preparation of DXM using an ionic liquid. In step 1a, in a flask, charge 1-butyl-3-methyl imidazolium acetate under nitrogen atmosphere. Charge S octabase under nitrogen atmosphere. Charge sodium methoxide solution in methanol under nitrogen atmosphere. Charge methyl formate. Rise temperature of the reaction mass to little reflux by using hot water no more than 55 Celsius. Stir and maintain the reaction compiles. Concentrate the reaction mass till almost no solvent distills. To concentrate reaction mass, charge toluene under nitrogen atmosphere and water extraction is done. The extracted toluene layer was concentrated to give N-formal octa base and is in further reaction. In stage 1b, in another flask, charge ortho 
phosphoric acid charged toluene and raise the temperature of the reaction mass. Reflux and maintain over Dean Stark of Paradis to remove water irresistibly. Cool the reaction mass under nitrogen atmosphere and charge phosphoric pentaoxide under nitrogen atmosphere. Reaction is highly exothermic. Charge 1 butyl 3 methyl imidazolium acetate slowly as N formal octic octabase and rise the temperature of the reaction mass under nitrogen atmosphere. Stir and maintain the reaction mass at 65 through 70 Celsius under the under nitrogen atmosphere till reaction compiles. Reaction concentrate the reaction mass under vacuum to remove toluene. To the concentrated mass, charge ethyl acetate under nitrogen atmosphere and stir. In another flask, charge water and cool. Charge ethyl acetate reaction mixture reaction mass into chilled water. Stir, settle, and separate the layers. Repeat for back extraction. Wash the organic layer with water again and then was of 7% of sodium bicarbonate is given. Concentrate the organic layer till no solvent distills. Degas the concentrate to remove traces of solvents. Stage 1C. To concentrate mass, charge 1-butyl-3-methyl imidazolium acetate and methanol under nitrogen atmosphere. Stir and add sodium hydroxide solution pre-cooled around 15 Celsius. Rise the temperature of the reaction mass. Stir and maintain the reaction mass till reaction compiles. Concentrate the reaction, reaction mass. To concentrate mass, charge toluene under nitrogen atmosphere and water workup is done. The extracted toluene layer was concentrated to give n ortho dextromethorphan. Stage 1D. To the mixture of 1 butyl 3 methyl imidazolium acetate and n and or demeth orphan solely add formic acid solution charge form aldehyde solution raise temperature of the reaction mass stir and maintain the reaction mass till reaction compiles this takes about two hours after the reaction is complete charge water cool the reaction and then slowly add sodium hydroxide solution pre-cooled extracted the product until toluene change water cool and slowly add hydrobromic acid raise the temperature of the reaction mass to 70 to 80 celsius stir and maintain to get a clear solution the organic and aqueous layers separated cool the aqueous layer under stirring to get participation and further cool to 3 to 6 celsius wash with pre-chilled water dry the solid under vacuum to get DXM hydrobromide. Okay, since DXM has been used recreationally since the 1960s, I would like to go over the slang names that have been created over time. Slang names for DXM include CCC, Triple C, TUS, DEX, Skittles, Robo, Poor Man's PCP, or Red Devils. DXM recreationally abused is commonly used orally from over-the-counter medicines, but can also be snorted in the form of powder or injected. DXM is not registered in the schedules of the United Nations 1961 Convention on Narcotic Drugs. A variety of preparations containing DXM alone or in combination with other drugs have been introduced. DXM containing medicines differ in the form of drug dosage, from syrup to capsules, and many of them have an unpleasant taste that would discourage their abuse. Since the 1950s, several ways of abuse have been recorded, and in some countries, DXM medicines were assigned a prescription-only status. The last cycle of DXM abuse started after gel tabs were introduced, and abusers found a more concentrated and single-component source of DXM. Data from the California Poison Control Center from the period 1999 to 2004 showed a 15-fold increase in the DXM abuse among adolescents and a 10-fold increase among all age groups. The main reason why DXM is so popular among adolescents is its availability. In most countries, it is sold in a range of over-the-counter cough and cold medicines and is available for anyone without the risk of punishment for illegal activity in comparison to illicit drugs.
This table does an amazing job of describing the effects of different amounts of DXM consumed. In stage 1, 1 1.5 through 2.5 mg kg has to be consumed. The effects include increased alternness, breathlessness, and generalized euphoria. In stage 2, 2.5 through 7.5 mg kg has to be consumed. The effects include exaggerated auditory and visual sensations followed by periods of deprivation, imbalance, hallucinations, increased energy, and excitability. In stage 3, 7.5 through 15 mg kg has to be consumed. The effects include visual and auditory disturbances, periods or semi-consciousness, delayed reaction and response time, impaired cognitive ability, mania and or panic, and partial dissociation. In stage 4, more than 15 mg kg has to be consumed. The effects include complete dissociation, hallucination, delusions, and extia. I will go over a brief overview of new utilization of DXM. The new utilization of DXM in the treatment of nervous and mental diseases include pain relief, drug and nicotine withdrawal, epilepsy, Parkinson's disease, depression, as well as diabetes, mellitus-related disease. DXM has antidepressant effects. DXM does bind to multiple sites such as sigma-1, SERT, and NMDAR that have been implicated in the effects of other antidepressants. Many antidepressants bind to sigma-1, for example, and sigma-1 knockout mice show depression-like symptoms, suggesting agonism, like with DXM, could be useful. Affinity for sigma-1 opioid receptors was documented for some of the classical antidepressants. Selective sigma-1 agonists exhibited good antidepressant activities in several behavioral models. Lastly, I would like to go over three molecules, DXM, morphine, and coding, and the similarity of their chemical structure. All three have the same nitrogen ring. Unlike DXM, codeine and morphine have the exact structure except for the methoxy group in codeine and the alcohol group coming off of the benzene ring from morphine. DXM seemed to be a promising molecule for clinical use because it is antisystesive effects compared to codeine and morphine was nearly equal but it lacks opioid characteristics adverse effects such as drowsiness, nausea, constipation, and dependence. The mode of action of both DXM and coding is central. I find it surprising that these molecules are very similar in structure but have different effects and purposes. Now that concludes my presentation. These are my references. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please post on the Canvas discussion page and I'll try my best to answer any of those questions. And good luck with upcoming finals.